I want to teach you today. I want to teach you today about uh, the difference between uh, wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. When we are studying the things of God, it's very important for us to know the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Uh, of course, uh, knowledge is basically knowing what to say at some point, and the wisdom is knowing when to say it. There's a big difference, and many people don't really understand this difference in a Bible aspect, because wisdom and knowledge both recur uh, often in the Bible as different themes in the Bible, and they are related but not synonymous. The dictionary defines wisdom as the ability to discern or to judge what is true, right, or lasting. And uh, knowledge, on the other hand, is information gained through experience, reasoning, or acquaintance. And uh, knowledge can exist without wisdom, but not the other way around. One can be knowledgeable, but without wisdom. Knowledge is knowing how to use a gun. And wisdom is knowing when to use it and when to keep it holstered. So we have to understand that uh, God, God wants us to have knowledge of him. And uh, what he expects of us is that knowledge should come from his word. It's not coming from any other thing. It's not coming from the world. It's coming from his word. In order to obey him, we have to have knowledge of his commands. We have to know his commands. That's really important. But as equally important as having the knowledge is also having wisdom. Because knowing facts about God and the Bible is not all there is to wisdom. Wisdom is a gift from God. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of James 1.5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men uh, liberally or uh, generously and upbraideth not and shall be given unto him. You see? So anyone who is lacking wisdom, they should ask God who will give him generously and without finding any fault, he will give it to you. God blesses us with wisdom in order for us to glorify him and to use the knowledge we have of him. Okay, and uh, the book of Proverbs is perhaps the best place in the Bible to learn biblical wisdom. In uh, Proverbs 1 7, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And you see. To fear the Lord is to start on the path of knowledge. Your walking is like you're walking in a path of knowledge to understand how God is like, how God behaves, what God loves, what God doesn't like, how you should please God. Because remember, my, my brothers and sisters, we are in this world not to please ourselves, but to please God. You have to understand what does he like? If you're married to someone, you have to understand what does she like or what does he like so that I can know how to please her or him. That's exactly why we need that knowledge of God. We understand God. We understand him and we know what does he enjoy so that you can know and learn how to please him. Are you understanding this point? Okay. So to fear the Lord is to start on that path to knowledge. And God can then begin to provide us with the wisdom through Christ, who the Bible says is wisdom itself. Jesus himself is wisdom. Let me show you the Bible, what the Bible says here in the book of, uh, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, okay? 1 Corinthians uh, 1 verse 30. 1 verse 30, yes, okay? Let me show you. Jesus is wisdom himself. See? But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. You see, Jesus is wisdom. And when you know Christ, you know wisdom. You shall know the truth. The truth is Jesus. And the truth will set you free. Wisdom sets you free. 
It gives you liberty. When you know Jesus, you know wisdom and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So Jesus Christ himself is wisdom. And when you know him, you've known everything. Are you getting the point here? So when you talk about knowledge, when we talk about knowledge, knowledge is what is gathered over time through study of the scriptures. Okay? Whenever you're uh, 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 reading the scriptures, memorizing and all those kind of things, you're getting knowledge, okay? You're getting the knowledge. And uh, it can be said that wisdom in turn, okay? Wisdom, wisdom in turn acts properly upon that knowledge that you've gotten. Wisdom is the fitting application of knowledge. Knowledge understands the light has turned red. And the wisdom applies the breaks. Are you, are you getting the point? I, I, I don't know if you're getting this. Knowledge sees the quicksand and wisdom tells you walk around it. Knowledge memorizes the Ten Commandments and wisdom obeys them. Knowledge learns of God and wisdom loves him. If you love Jesus from your heart, you have wisdom. If you just know about God, even the devil knows, they know God. The Bible tells us even the devil knows God. And he even called him, you are the son of God. Satan knows that God, Jesus is God. But does that mean he's saved? No. Knowing God and having the wisdom to love him, they are two different kind of things. So that wisdom is for us to love God. The knowledge is for us to know him. So once we know him, we can love him. So basically, at the end of the day, like this quote says here, wisdom is the fitting application of knowledge. When you know something, then you have wisdom to act upon that knowledge. That's why when you look about uh, at the Pharisees, the Pharisees were reading the word of God day in, day out. They had the knowledge of the word of God, but they lacked wisdom to understand who they were reading. It is Jesus Christ. They lacked the wisdom to calculate and know the person they were being told by the prophets that he would come is that, that, that person who is standing in front of them. And because they lacked wisdom, they killed Jesus. The person they have been preaching all through, they killed him because they lacked wisdom. They only had knowledge. And that's why salvation is by understanding. Understanding is getting wisdom. The way you can be saved is by understanding. Of course, you know that Jesus died for you. That Everybody knows that Jesus died uh, on, at the cross. Even Muslims, even even an atheist, everybody knows that Jesus, there was a guy called Jesus who died at the cross. That's, that's knowledge. But the wisdom or the understanding is to know that Jesus died for you. He died for your sins. You are the one who was supposed to be on that cross. But then he replaced himself so that you can have his life and he can have your death. He took your sins away. He died for your sins. He shed his blood for you so that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. And all you need to do is understand that fact and confess to him. Tell him, Jesus, I know you died for me. You were buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I received that payment of sin, that atonement by faith. Be my Lord and Savior. And once you do that, my friends, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. You can also subscribe to watch more and uh, share to your friends. Let them get to hear the message of truth. And as well, check on the description below. We have a couple of other channels where you can go and see what, what, what we share in other places. And share also to your friends. God bless you and have a good time.